What's up YouTube? Dem here with an incredibly delayed news post video because I haven't been doing anything for a while and I'm sorry for that. But here we go, let's get into it. So, I've only really done a video on the initial announcement post of Legion. So if you missed that, it's in the description, but let's go ahead and get into all the things that have been posted since then. GG has been running a thread that's pinned on the uh, website with all of the current spoilers. This is like the teasers, right? But it's not the other things, like the, uh, the new skills and the fact and the like new guard skills stuff like that it doesn't show those so it's a little bit confusing but we'll try to keep up with everything so we'll start with the uh the new blood and st blood and sandstorm skills they're pretty cool it's like a slowly drifting aoe thing i don't know if it hits a lot or if it's a dot it's hard to tell right now they haven't given us the gems yet but that's the sandstorm version the blood version is like stationary that, I don't know, to me it feels like a weirder version of Sweep, if that makes sense. And you can swap between the two whenever you feel like it. I don't personally think I like it that much. We'll see how the damage scales, obviously, but it's it's an aura that you reserve and then you get to do stuff with it, you know? I don't know. I think it'll be fun because it's a new melee skill, you know? But I just, I'm not sure if it's going to have a fun play skill, play style, if that makes sense, because you get to you move a little bit faster when you're in the sandstorms, you blind enemies, so maybe if you run really fast, it'll be good. But I just, I don't know, I'm not really feeling it yet. Until we see the skill gems, I have no real opinion on this other than, eh. <laughs> it looks like you just kind of use it as sweep. You stop, hit an AOE, run, hit an AOE, run, hit an AOE, you know? I want something that feels new, that doesn't really feel new to me. It looks new, but doesn't feel new. Uh, the next thing is the Steel Skin and the Guard Skills. I haven't actually even read this, so skills, Steel Skin is a new defensive skill which is available very early on. It instantly hardens your skin, granting a damage barrier that absorbs 70% of all damage taken. God damn, it has a maximum amount of damage it can absorb, which increases the gem levels. It only lasts a few seconds, as a short cooldown, and you need to time your skill to protect you from dangerous attacks. Okay, so when you see an enemy doing like a telegraph big slam hit, you just tog, tog this, tag this toggle this english is hard turns on blocks the attack cool it's one of three guard skills alongside molten shell and immortal call these skills are all instant and share cooldown which won't expire while any of the skills are active okay so you can't stack all three makes sense both molten shell and immortal call have received significant changes which give them a more active play style that rewards quick reaction times however they're still triggerable if you want to use them mindlessly good they're still a castle damage takenable that's good uh, Molten Shell now grants armor with active and a damage barrier that absorbs 75% of damage taken. These numbers are insane. Like what? The maximum damage that it can absorb is now based on 20% of your total armor, making it a powerful choice for high armor characters. Okay, so armor guardians are now immortal. <laughs> cool. It also lasts slightly longer than Steel Skin. When Molten Shell absorbs its maximum amount of damage, or when the duration ends, all of the absorbed damage is dealt as reflected damage in an area around you with a large multiplier. I think I like that. So for those who don't know what an armor guardian is, the Templar that sends into guardian, they stack a bunch of mana and ES to get a buttload of active armor and they reserve their life and mana. So they have like 20,000 plus, 100,000 plus armor, you know? So you can get it to re absorb 75% of damage taken based off 25% of your total armor, 20% of your total armor. So if you have 100,000 armor, you absorb 20,000 damage. And then it hits enemies around you for that damage? That might one-shot a lot of things. I don't know, it's interesting. Immortal Call, okay, this is, I just read this, this is insane. Immortal Call is now instant, which it already was, I think. It's just, I mean, it wasn't. When it was on cast of damage taken, it was instant. It now grants less physical and elemental damage taken for its duration. So instead of it being a pure, you're immune to physical damage, it's now a less multiplier, but it also applies to Ellie, which is massive. It can consume up to five endurance charges. Interesting. Gaining increased duration and additional less phys damage taken. At level 20, it can mitigate 35% of physical damage taken and 34% of Ellie damage taken. Consuming endurance charges as an additional 10% less damage, physical damage taken for each charge consumed. So up to 85% physical damage taken. Less physical damage taken, okay. Unlike Molten Shell and Steel Skin, this skill has no maximum damage absorbed, which makes it a much more effective answer to the deadliest physical hits. It's, I mean, it's still the best answer to that. It was before this. It still is, that's good. However, this requires more planning and timing to make it the most of its effect and long, no longer grants it complete immunity to physical damage. So I think overall, thank you for the follow. I'm not streaming or doing anything, but thank you. <laughs> Have it. Uh, let's see. I think that overall, that means that it's just better for generic use. 
because like you get that elemental damage taking modifier this is a pretty massive buff like phase damage is a majority of the damage from like attacks in this game but there was no way to really mitigate ellie damage using skills like this and now you can i think that's a general buff defensively for most builds which is kind of cool uh, let's see overall these changes give you the opportunity to survive dangerous attacks while still standing your ground they also reward responsive skillful play <laughs> most players myself included don't have this so we're gonna have to start learning we're eager to see what kind of character builds we'll be creating in Path of Exile Legion. If you're waiting for more information to decide your build, you'll be interested to know that on June 5th, we plan to reveal all of the new and changed skill gems at level 20 with 20% quality. Okay, so that's like a week from now. Great. All right, the next thing. I guess we'll do... Let's, do, let's look at all the spoilers that we haven't seen yet. I believe we saw this. I talked about this on stream. I don't know if I talked about it in a video yet, but these are the uh, corrupted Vol gems. You can, like the Legion ones, one drops from each... Legion, there's five legions, they have different types of variations, they're kind of like Watcher's Eyes more or less, and they corrupt things around them on the skill tree into new keystones. So instead of this being Mind Over Matter, it's now Eternal Youth, which gives you less life regen, less total recovery per second from Leech, but it makes your energy shield recharge apply to life. So when you're in-game, you take damage, right? And then your ES is down, you stop taking damage for like two or three seconds or whatever it is, and then it starts recharging. That modifier now applies to your life total. So instead, you would stop taking life damage for a couple seconds, and then you start recharging your life total back to full. Which is pretty freaking interesting. Um, especially if this also makes all of these life nodes as well, so you can like achieve a higher maximum life total. I think the highest I've ever seen was Rand, last league or the league before. He achieved 20,000 life in league without any legacy gear he probably could have gotten 25 30k with legacy gear you know but this should push that number higher now the next thing is tavukai this was actually shown this image was shown on the original legion post but this is the srs amulet it allows you to make your summon raging spirits have increased damage duration life but they take 20 percent of life per second as chaos damage so that means in five seconds they die and then they explode um assuming that you take the uh this node, minion instability. It allows you to use them as like homing missile devices, basically. They walk, they'll run towards enemies, maybe attack them once or twice and then blow up, dealing damage based off their max life and damage. So I think this opens up a new play style because they're always taking that damage. You don't have to use like flask nodes. We used to have to use, uh, oh God, there's a, I think it's a belt where your flasks apply to your minions and you could take damage from Dodre's elixirs to make your minions take damage and they would explode. But this allows you to just do it naturally, which is pretty cool. I, don't, I like that. I like it a lot. Uh, the next thing is another one of those Vol Corruption Legion Jewels. It changes Resolute Technique to Glancing Blows. Bl doubles your attack block chance and your spell block chance. But you take 50% of damage from the blocked hits. So, on most characters with a shield, shields generally have like 25-35% to 35 block chance. Which means you'll have 50-70% to 70 block chance with this, but... Instead of being taking zero damage from the block hits, you take 50% of the damage from block hits. I think it's good. I was like on the fence about this. We talked about it on stream, but I think that uh, for those type of builds that don't invest in the block, it makes sense to take it. If you're, you know, on this part of the tree with the corrupted Legion jewel in this area and you won't want RT, which is a lot of ifs, but you could take this and just be like more defensive overall. It's not going to make you completely avoid the one shots, but it'll cut the damage in half, which I think is pretty good allow for some interesting like staff characters for example could use this since they have 20 percent block chance on the staff most block staffs have 20 percent i think 18 to 20 they'll put it up to 36 to 40 percent chance to block without any investment other than this one node and since you're if you're on this part of the tree and you're using a staff you're probably wanting to go crit so you're going to take these nodes anyway for the melee crit nodes you know so this is just like free defense and it's one node off that's fine uh the next thing is they reworked pledge of hands which is, used to be level 30 Spell Echo, now it's level 30 Greater Spell Echo, which we don't have access to on a gem yet, but we have it on this. So, Greater Spell Echo causes supported spells to repeat twice, just like Echo, but it doesn't have a cast speed modifier. The repeats deal more spell damage and have increased AoE per repeat. I don't know if this stacks, if you could just like keep casting to get more and more and more damage over time. But either way, I because it's not the same gem as Spell Echo, you can now include Spell Echo, so you can get three or four repeats that each deal more damage and have more AoE. I don't know, I like this. It means it might be actually used. Especially with the guardian type characters with lots of mana. Because then they can get more armor and defenses out of it for the other stuff that we talked about. <laughs> I don't know, I like it. I'm going to close that. Alright, so the next thing is a div card. 
they unleashed a Sulfide Scarab div card, Buried Treasure, which means that it's most likely going to be from Alva incursion type things, or Temple Rooms, because this is literally the armor set that Alva wears. It's like Spanish Inquisition style armor, or Spanish Conquistador style armor. Um, it fits. I mean, I think it makes sense. He's trying to seek riches, riches. Alva's always trying to get rich, you know. And so you can do incursion content to get access to betrayal content to get access to delve content. I don't know how I feel about all of these interweaving webs of like this content gives this other content. Like it makes sense because they want you to do varied things. And if you do varied things, you get more stuff for other things. You can then go do those things and get things for other things. It's just like you just play the game a lot because of stuff like this. And this is a good thing because like getting access to sulfite scarabs is a really, really big annoyance right now. I don't even think I have any. I don't even know where they are. Oh, I have one. Yeah, I've gotten one Sulfide Scarab the entirety of this league, so pretty good. Uh, but yeah, this should help. And it, because it doesn't show you which one it is, you could get any of these three, Rusted, Polished, or Gilded. So it's probably weighted heavily towards the lowest one, but you know, it's still... Gary's contained Nico, which is good. All right, so this thing, they added a Rage Ticker to over the Mana Globe. Great. There's going to be a lot of new melee skills and ascendancies that deal with Rage, so you'll be able to see it over your Mana Globe, just on this little, like, Raid-looking thing, which I think is good. I still wish they would rework these bars so that you could see auras separately from, like, buffs and debuffs, separately from negative buffs and debuffs, you know? Like, this should be auras, this should be, like, charges, headhunter buffs, inspired learning buffs, stuff like that, and then it should be, like, bleed, poison curses so you can actually differentiate between them instead of them all being across the entirety of your screen and then like maybe having the skill charge stuff somewhere else as well like uh like blade flurry example the charge up is up here as well and you can't find it because it moves constantly it's not like a stagnant position it just moves all the time which is really annoying so i don't know this is this is a big quality of life for rage but there's a lot of other things i wish they would fix all right, so here's another Corrupted Legion Jewel potential keystone called Dance with Death. You can't use helmets, crit strike chance is lucky, damage with crits is lucky, enemies damage with crits against you is lucky. This replaces the point blank keystone, which is a more multiplier to enemies at close. Oh, wait, no, never mind. Oh my god, that's point blank. Is that? Yeah, sorry, no, I was right. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. No, that's point blank. Yeah, this is the. Yeah, okay, we're good. Sorry, I thought. My brain just was like lost what the skill tree looked like. Anyways, point blank gives you 50% more damage when they're right next to you, but less damage as they're farther away. This replaces that with just giving you a bunch more damage if you're a crit build, because lucky crits basically means that you roll the crit twice, so you roll, it's like, I think you roll like a, a dice twice. You get one to six, right? This just takes the higher roll between the two when you choose whether or not you crit, and then it, when you roll your damage roll, if it's like a 1,000 to 2,000, it takes the higher roll again. So it's a pretty huge multiplier to your overall damage. It makes you more consistent, basically. But it means enemies are more consistent with you. But you can use things like Enfeeble to take less crits, less enemies have less accuracy, they have less multiplier, less damage, to reduce that effect, I guess. But you're still going to have a pretty good chance of something critting you and just one-shotting you because they got a lucky crit, you know? I kind of like it. Thematically, it's cool. Um, replacing point blank on a lot of ranged characters is kind of nice because getting up into enemies' faces kind of ruins the main defensive bonus of being ranged, which is, you know, you're not in melee range, but point blank makes you want to stand in melee range to kill things. So I like this, but not being able to use a helmet, it's kind of iffy. Most characters get, like, say, 80 life and some resists out of their helmet. Usually a helm enchant. Losing your helmet enchant's a big oof, so... If you're playing a skill that doesn't really have a good helm enchant, like skills that only have 40% increased damage as their best helm enchant, this is going to be better than that. But you still lose your helm and slot for jewels, for life, for resists, for stats, you know, all that other stuff. Abyssal sockets, you know. So it's interesting, we'll see. I like things that have a clear drawback like this. I think most keystones in the game are like that. There's a drawback, but some of them the drawback isn't enough to matter. Like point blank, for example, like every range character takes point blank for the most part because the less multiplier doesn't matter because you only are that far away when you're killing trash. But I don't know, I like that. Uh, the next thing is Honor Home Soldier Helmet. They gave it plus two lightning gems and it requires level 12. So my Lightning Trapper Saboteur, this is a good helmet for that for leveling since you can get plus two socketed gems in the helmet. Great. Or any generic caster. Plus two gems at level 12 is pretty solid, because it means if you're a caster or a character that scales heavily with level of gems, like Ellie Hit, Explosive Arrow, things like that, this is a pretty huge four link for your helmet slot. You can get a 
higher level gem to deal more damage early on. Uh, next thing is the another keystone. <laughs> it converts, what is that? Oh god, I don't even know which one that is. I never take these ones. Is that Crimson Dance? I believe so. Yeah. So it converts the bleed keystone up to 8 bleeds to 80% of maximum mana is converted to twice that much armor. So mana guardians, again, <laughs> if you have 20,000 mana, you get... Oh Jesus, why did they word it like this? 16k armor? No. 32k armor, which is a pretty good amount. Uh, next thing is Star of the Divine got reworked slightly, I think. It allows you to use flask, life flasks as life, as energy shield pots, sorry. You get the Zealot's Oath during flask effect, which is up here, this keystone. It allows you to apply life region to ES instead. This allows you to also use life flask to ES instead, which is interesting. It'll be really good for energy shield based characters, especially early on when you're just transitioning into CI or low life and you're not really comfortable with it yet. You don't have a lot of ES, you can still use your life pots to heal. I, I think I like it. And it was kind of useless otherwise, so that's cool. The next thing, there's a big video on this, I think the big class episode covered this as well, but they've changed it so that weapon range is like, it makes sense. It's based off how wide the animation is, right? And you can see how much weapon range you have based off the animation as well. This is high weapon range with like a foil or something, you see how big it is now? Like, you'll be able to actually tell what you're hitting and make it feel better. It'll be much more responsive, much more accurate overall, like that's a pretty huge rework. I'm, it sounds like it's not a lot, but this is massive. You can actually see how far away you can smack things, which is great. Next thing is, we got a couple new sextant mods being spoiled. Um, this looks like a red sextant. Also, there's a new map layout. Again, they look like weird lumpy square octagon things. Possessed monsters drop an additional rusted scarab. Areas contain an additional tormented betrayer. Okay. Uh, rusted scarab is the lowest tier of scarabs. These ones, you know. So that's good, we're getting more and more sources of Scarabs. I've been asking for these to be added to the core game since Betrayal League. Like, instead of being locked behind a specific Betrayal mechanic, they should just drop everywhere all the time. Because this is basically League Stones. Um, and if they dropped everywhere, you could actually have access to them. But a lot of players like don't know how to set up their Betrayal mechanics, don't feel like setting up their Betrayal mechanics so they can farm specific Scarabs. So they just don't, which means you can't really buy them in bulk. You can't really participate in farming that specific content that you want to. So stuff like this helps a lot. Just means you'll have access to more scarabs. Oh god, this is a whole other thing by itself, so we might skip that for now. I um, might do it in the next video. Uh, another one, another sextant spoiler. Areas contain additional corrupted vol monsters. Areas have a 50% chance to contain gifts of the sacrificed per sacrifice fragment used. Gifts of the Red Queen for mortal fragment used. I don't know what this means exactly. I think it's a chest, like a unique chest or something. But I'm not really sure. They haven't really told us that much, these are just teasers, so... I think that's good, it encourages people to use the sack fragments to get more quantity, and you get bonuses based on how many you use, so I like that. Um, I think the next video will go over the Legion Fac and the Chief in Ascendancy, so... I um, hope you guys enjoyed that, I'll see you in the next one, that'll be getting me up.